Money has always played a key role in American politics, but is it distorting the democratic process? As we reported last year, that's the charge made against Charles and David Koch, two secretive billionaires who've been bankrolling opposition to Barack Obama. So with eight months to go to the presidential elections, has anything changed? Or could the Koch fortune win the White House for the right? In the American West, Colorado's Rocky Mountains are famous for first-class skiing. But last June, dozens of the richest people in America traveled to Vail for a different reason, to attend a secret meeting at this luxury hotel located in an exclusive community. I'm going to turn it over for a quick welcome uh, to Charles Coe. Charles, take it away. The invitation-only gathering of right-wing funders and activists was convened by Charles and David Koch, billionaire owners of Coke Industries, a privately held oil, chemical, paper, and financial services conglomerate with revenues of $100 billion a year. Attendees at Coke meetings, held twice a year, are sworn to secrecy, but undercover recordings were leaked to a blog. What I want to do is recognize not all of our great partners, but those partners who have given more than a million over the last 12 months. The Kochs and their partners spent at least $40 million in the 2010 U.S. elections, helping to shift the balance of power in the House of Representatives towards right-wing Tea Party Republicans. In Colorado, Charles Koch urged wealthy conservatives to dig deep into their pockets for the 2012 fight against President Barack Obama. This is the mother of our wars we've got over the next 18 months. For the life or death of this country, they are radical libertarians, basically. They oppose big government. They think that the free market does better when it's unregulated. And the family's been pretty much in, in kind of complete opposition to everything that's been done in America in terms of progressivism since the New Deal. Jane Mayer, an award-winning reporter for The New Yorker magazine, wrote a groundbreaking expose of the Kochs in 2010. They will say that they are just simply purely interested in these p kinds of politics for philosophical kinds of reasons, but the politics they favor also help their business interests. David Koch ran for vice president on the libertarian ticket in 1980, opposing Ronald Reagan from the right. An editor who knows the Kochs told Mayer that when David lost, the brothers turned away from electoral politics and set out to build a top-to-bottom operation to shape public policy in America. I think they've been amazingly effective. Their pockets are almost bottomless, and so they can keep pouring money into this whole process. It's been reported that to defeat President Barack Obama, the Kochs plan to raise and spend more than $200 million. You want to kick in a billion? Believe me, we'll have a special seminar just for you. <laughs> But the Kochs could easily write checks for more without anyone knowing, due to loopholes in American law. It was very hard to figure out, in fact impossible to figure out, how much money they've spent on American politics. It was easily $100 million um, since 1980. Charles and David Koch and their foundations have spent untold millions promoting their conservative libertarian agenda for America. They've poured money into backing favorable political candidates, heavily funded right-wing groups and think tanks, and spent millions lobbying public officials. They've created a web of influence that stretches from state capitals all the way to Congress. For decades, the Kochs largely escaped scrutiny, but that began to change when Barack Obama was elected president and the conservative Tea Party movement took off. We're against socialism in America. We, want, we stand for the Constitution, the Bill of Rights. We want our freedom. The Koch brothers, in a way, gave birth to the Tea Party. Lee Fong is an investigator for Republic Report, a blog that tracks money and politics. He has kept close tabs on Americans for Prosperity, a political operation founded and funded by the Kochs to generate grassroots support for conservative policies and candidates. If you look at the first major wave of Tea Party rallies, they were centrally organized through Americans for Prosperity. They organized dozens and dozens of miniature rallies all over the country, in some cases actually paying for speakers 
and, and buses to bring people in. Americans for Prosperity's President Tim Phillips also spearheaded a hands off my health care tour targeting Obama's first policy initiative. This Senate and this House that meet right back at the Capitol behind us are going to vote on whether or not your health care becomes run by the government. In the end, a health bill was passed, but Obama was severely weakened in the fight. Today, Americans for Prosperity, AFP, has 35 state chapters and claims to have close to 2 million members. Five years ago, my brother Charles and I uh, provided the funds to start uh, the Americans for Prosperity. And uh, it's beyond my wildest dreams how AFP has grown into this enormous uh, organization. At AFP's 2009 National Summit, the heads of the organization's state chapters boasted to David Koch of their support for the Tea Party movement. We helped organize huge tea parties all throughout the state. The largest tax day tea party in the nation on April 15th. And if you try to raise our taxes and trample on our liberties, we're either going to beat you or make your life miserable. Before I wrote about them, they consistently denied that they were involved in the Tea Party. Eventually it became impossible because you could just connect all the dots. I think we've helped, but these are individualistic, entrepreneurial folks. Before joining Americans for Prosperity, Tim Phillips ran a hard-nosed political consulting firm. Do you think the Tea Party would be as evolved as it is now if you hadn't provided the kind of support you did in terms of training, communications? I mean, you really played a central role in helping to build that movement, don't you think? No one directs them, uh, they, but we're good friends and partners with them, you bet, and we try to help them in every way we can. Whose interests does Americans for Prosperity represent? Uh, the interest of any American who wants economic prosperity and freedom. What do you say to those who say, look, it, Americans for Prosperity is representing the interests of the Cokes, the wealthy, corporations? In the health care fight, who are we fighting for? Average folks who didn't want the government making health care decisions uh, for them. On issue after issue, when you look at the results of what the left wants, who's going to be hurt by their policies and who's going to be helped by our policies, uh, it's clear we're, we're fighting for the middle class and for people who uh, work for a living. Hundreds of thousands of middle and working class people across the American Midwest would say just the opposite. In Wisconsin, Americans for Prosperity played a key role last spring in supporting Republican Governor Scott Walker's efforts to cut social spending and eliminate collective bargaining rights for public employees. We're not going to allow for one minute uh, the protesters to feel like they can drown out the voices of those millions of taxpayers all across the state of Wisconsin. The Cokes provided funds to help get Walker elected. Then when citizens marched on the state capitol and occupied it to protest his plan, Americans for Prosperity spent at least half a million dollars on an anti-union ad campaign. Who decides Wisconsin's future, voters or government unions? Governor Walker has the courage to do what's right for Wisconsin. Stand with Walker. Um, do you need a ride to the polls or anything? When Walker's anti-union bill passed, the unions and Democrats responded by trying to remove Republican legislators in a special recall election this past August. Middle class families and working families across the country need to start standing up to what we're seeing. Phil Neuenfeld is the Wisconsin president of the AFL-CIO, the largest union federation in the U.S. It spent millions of dollars in the recall to counter millions pouring into Wisconsin to back Republicans. And thank her for balancing the budget and reforming government. From Americans for Prosperity and other conservative groups. We are operating under full disclosure. We are saying where our money is coming from. We are saying what our money is spent on. And what I've been trying to do is challenge uh, the American public and the media to ask the same questions of Americans for prosperity. The employees unions and the teachers unions are two of the last bastions of serious strength on the progressive side of democratic politics. That's where the money is and if you want to eviscerate the left in America you go after those groups. When the recall vote came in, two Republicans lost their seats, but the unions and Democrats needed three. We're winning there. We've won there for the year. There's no doubt about that. Isn't what's going on in Wisconsin really about trying to destroy the political power of unions? Yeah, that's a silly comment. I mean, Bob, come on. It's about trying to bring economic prosperity back. And with regard to union rights, uh, with public employee unions, 
uh, they are simply receiving pensions and health benefits that are unfair and unjust. To go after unions over pensions, what about going after corporate executives who are now making, you know, uh, 300 times what an average worker was in the past? Uh, Americans, uh, America has the, the most progressive income tax system uh, in the world. So you look at the percent, you look sorry, at the you inequality, look at the, inequality in America right now. Here's what's it's made the America. same as it was before the Great Depression. The top 1% is controlling 25% of the income and 40% of the wealth. Here in this country, we give you opportunity. We give you opportunity to fulfill your dreams, to go as far as they will take you. How much have you guys spent in Wisconsin to support Walker and take on the unions there? Uh, a lot. Can you give me a number? Uh, like we don't give numbers and, and go into details. Uh, I think that's proprietary information, uh, but it's substantial. Americans for Prosperity is also very active in another critical 2012 presidential election state, Ohio, whose Governor John Kasich pushed a bill to weaken unions that is similar to Wisconsin's. In August, Ohio citizens protested the annual meeting of the American Legislative Exchange Council, or ALEC, at a New Orleans hotel. ALEC is another Koch-funded group that brings together corporate lobbyists and conservative legislators to draft model laws. It turns out the anti-union measures in both Wisconsin and Ohio reflect ALEC model legislation, which the organization tries to keep under wraps. But last year, a whistleblower leaked more than 800 of ALEC sample bills to the Center for Media and Democracy. Lisa Graves is its executive director. What happens here through ALEC is that these corporations are actually voting, voting, pre-approving these bills. Then these legislators go along with this system, introduce these bills in the state houses, and don't tell the public at all that those bills were pre-approved, pre-voted on by corporations. Voter ID laws passed last year in Wisconsin and four other states that make it harder for minorities, students, and the elderly to vote were based on an ALEC bill. When you got this trove of model legislation, what surprised you most about it? It affected nearly every area of uh, individual rights. The bills affect health, health care rights, the protection of the environment. Many of the bills that have been produced by ALEC reflect Coke DNA, what I call Coke DNA, uh, because it reflects this um, uh, free market fundamentalism. The Cokes have provided about $1 million to the organization, along with a $500,000 loan when it was floundering. The reason I think ALEC was such an ingenious idea is that a little money goes a long way in the states. You can really have influence in state legislatures with, by, by spending. It's, it's, it's a lot cheaper to buy than Congress is. ALEC, like the Cokes, would rather avoid the press. We were denied media credentials for the New Orleans meeting, but went anyway to find out why sessions are closed to the public and to follow up on our request for an interview with a representative from Coke Industries. Why can't you credential me? We're focused on domestic issues at this time. But you know, and many of your many of your corporations sir, operate around the world. I'm sorry, but I'm going to have why, to ask you to Why are your workshops, why are your workshop, why are your task force meetings closed to the press and the public? We will not be credentialing you at this time. I would like to please ask you to leave the premises. We were escorted out and never heard from Coke Industries about our interview request. We did succeed in discovering the curious workshops ALEC offers state legislators, like this one suggesting climate change due to increased carbon dioxide in the atmosphere could be beneficial. Climate change policy debate, which would fundamentally reorder the way we make energy and the way we use energy, has a direct business interest to the Cokes. Uh, they, they do a lot with pipelines that move oil, they have refineries. Kurt Davies is the research director for Greenpeace, which has compiled the most comprehensive database on the Koch's political spending. Since 1998, we've tracked over $50 million that they have sent to various front groups and think tanks in Washington, around the country, who have run various elements of a campaign against the science of global warming to uh, oppose the consensus view that, that climate change is real and urgent, and we have to do something about it. The Koch's investment in conservative think tanks and academia is another key component of their integrated campaign to shape America's political policies. It says specifically... Patrick Michaels, a senior fellow at the Cato Institute, often appears in the media to contest global warming science. 
This is a problem that's going to solve itself unless we do something silly. The Cato Institute, which was founded by Charles Koch, has received about $14 million from the Kochs. I think that society will address the emissions of carbon dioxide and the energy issues because of pressures for increased efficiency. Only one in three Americans sees global warming as a serious threat, a sharp drop since 2009, according to a Gallup poll. A critical turning point was ClimateGate, the controversy over emails hacked from scientists well, at a lot, British university. Well, a lot of what troubled me were the attempts to uh, hide things from Freedom of Information Acts. You've got to wonder what's being hidden. What pundits like Pat Michaels and institutions like Cato did they, they declared that this evidence, these emails, showed that scientists were lying about data. In fact, multiple institutions have exonerated the scientists. There was no wrongdoing, no uh, misinformation. Those investigations, none of them were truly independent. The polls have showed a pretty significant change in Americans' attitudes. To what extent do you think the whole climate gate fiasco contributed to that? Oh, I think that ClimateGate did. You said on national television that you received about 40% of your funding from fossil fuel companies. Is that right? Varies. Varies. It varies. It varies. Have you ever received any funding from the Cokes? No. Oh, well, oh, that's not true. I had a speaking fee somewhere way back in the Ice Age. So you've just been paid by, through institutions that have been funded by them? You're right. I stand... I stand uh, I guess that's right, I have. Do you think it's just a coincidence that you are welcomed at an institution that promotes values that they are interested well, if in? Well, if they advocate? think the free markets are efficient uh, vehicles to create environmental protection, I think they're right. The Kochs have also promoted their free market ideology and business interests in Washington through aggressive lobbying on Capitol Hill and the funding of political candidates. The Kochs have spent upwards of $50 million since 2006 on lobbyists. The Kochs now are the largest funder of political campaigns within the oil and gas sector, exceeding Exxon. In 2010, the Kochs contributed to 62 of the 87 new Republican members of the House of Representatives. The Kochs were so instrumental in the Republican takeover that Lee Fong bumped into David Koch on Capitol Hill the day the new Speaker of the House was sworn in. Uh, what, what you're expecting from the new Congress? Uh, well, uh, cut the hell out of uh, spending and, uh, and uh, balance the budget and uh, reduce regulations and uh, support business. That same day, Koch's deputy Tim Phillips met with the new chairman of the House Energy and Commerce Committee, Fred Upton. The Kochs were the largest oil and gas donor to members of Upton's committee, who have vigorously opposed efforts by the Environmental Protection Agency, EPA, to reduce global warming emissions. At the end of the day, the EPA climate regime is all economic pain and no environmental gain. Congressmen backed by the Kochs have also refused to raise taxes on corporations and the wealthy, strenuously opposing President Obama and even their own leadership on fiscal matters. Now supporters of the Tea Party movement have complicated the Republican presidential primaries, failing to settle on a candidate to challenge Barack Obama. I don't think anyone could have predicted how crazy the Republican primary would be. You have a lot of candidates who might have fringe views that uh, are acceptable or excite the Tea Party. The Kochs chose not to endorse a candidate in the primaries. They are setting their sights on defeating Obama, winning the U.S. Senate, and expanding their influence in Congress. One of their more ambitious projects is a massive voter database called Themis. What they're trying to do is unprecedented. Ken Vogel writes on money and politics for the newspaper Politico in Washington. Now what they're trying to do is build an extra party political infrastructure that will carry out many of the same types of initiatives, grassroots organizing, advertising, get out the vote efforts that the parties themselves used to be the sole proprietors of. Americans for Prosperity has already spent at least six million dollars on ads attacking Obama for investment in renewable energy projects. We all know about Solyndra, the White House emails, the FBI raids, Solyndra invest... The ads accuse his administration of corruption for providing federal money to the now bankrupt solar energy company Solyndra. The Obama campaign was forced to respond, releasing their first ad of the campaign season. 
Secretive oil billionaires attacking President Obama with ads fact checkers say are not tethered to the facts. The Kochs absolutely want to undo the president, and I think the president's team knows this full well. Do you think the Kochs have influenced the debate over environmental policy in the Republican primaries? The Koch funded machinery certainly laid the groundwork for what we're seeing on the Republican Party. Right now we've got Mitt Romney disowning his past on climate change, Newt Gingrich disowning his past, and Santorum in absolute denial and trashing science. Davies says even President Obama has been pushed to the right. In fact, he's bragging about drilling more oil than Bush at this point. Obama is trying to raise a billion dollars for the campaign and has reason to fear an onslaught of big money from the right. Not only from the Kochs, but from groups affiliated with Karl Rove, the Republican operative who ushered George W. Bush into the White House. Karl Rove has talked about raising upwards of $300 million for the groups that he sort of loosely oversees. I would not be at all surprised to see the Kochs match that and probably exceed it. Preparing for the general election, Koch-funded organizations and Tea Party groups have teamed up at the Supreme Court to protest the constitutionality of the health care law passed by Democrats in 2010. I think the Koch brothers are trying to reignite the Tea Party. They're hoping that even if the Supreme Court comes down in favor of health reform, that this will enrage the Tea Party and they can harness that anger into uh, votes this November. The Kochs are also hoping to tap into anger over rising gas prices. Been from Florida to Montana, Ohio, Wisconsin, Americans now. for Prosperity tours the country blaming high gas prices on the Obama administration's energy policies. But others blame speculators for high prices, to which, again, the Koch brothers may have a connection. There's no doubt there's speculation in the oil markets. Nobody disputes that there is not only speculation, but the key word is excessive speculation. Michael Greenberger is a law professor and a former director of the Division of Trading and Markets at the Commodity Futures Trading Commission in Washington. When a consumer drives by a gas station and sees gas at four dollars or more a gallon, what do they need to understand about high gas prices today? I would say at least a dollar of that and probably more goes into the pockets of the speculators. Coke Industries has a financial arm that's one of the top oil traders in the world. But due to a lack of transparency in energy trading markets, only the company knows how much it speculates in oil. We wanted to ask Charles and David Coke about that, but they declined our request for an interview. However, these reports reveal that Coke Industries has been lobbying to shape commodity trading rules that were mandated by a 2010 financial reform bill. I'm almost certain they are not lobbying to make it stronger. Uh, they are part of a very large constituency that is trying to weaken all the regulatory gains we've made over the last few years to make these markets honest and fair. What do you say to the argument that the reason you're out here goes back to the fact that the Kochs are involved in speculation and that that's a way to divert attention from them? It's, a, it's an interesting argument. When you're losing on the issue, you resort to trying to go after uh, motive. They're going to win or lose based on the merits of these policies. And on the policies of economic freedom, we're right. And that's why we're winning. The Kochs continue to round up hundreds of millions of dollars for the fight. This past January, they held another one of their secret meetings with wealthy conservatives at a lush resort in Palm Springs, California. The meeting in Palm Springs, by all accounts, was huge and a pivotal fundraising event. New attendees included the casino magnate Sheldon Adelson, who has supported Newt Gingrich to the tune of $16.5 million in the primaries. And Foster Fries, a wealthy financier bankrolling Republican Rick Santorum. The Kochs have become a major nexus for conservative money in America for two reasons. Number one, they are regarded as extremely effective. The other reason why these donors are drawn to the Kochs is that these guys are where it's at right now and people just want to be a part of it. When a new government is installed in January 2013, what impact do you think the Kochs will have had? The Koch brothers uh, will have a tremendous impact. I think on a larger scale, this election is really going to come down to just a few billionaires. A couple on the left supporting the Democrats and a lot on the right supporting the Republicans. And I think in 2013, people will look back at this election as the greatest one bought and sold.